Hello everyone, welcome to the Bioinformatics Code channel. In today's video, I am going to show you how you can install and run Java in a Linux environment. So, I assume that you have your Linux system that you will use to follow this tutorial. So, what we are going to do is to first download the binaries for Java. We will use the OpenJDK version. And then after that, we extract the contents. After that, we set a path to the Java executable. And that is it. We can now run Java anywhere on our system. So let's first go and then download the binaries. So this is the page where you download the binaries. At the time of making this tutorial, you have JDK 17. And that's what we are going to use. So to download the binary, just click on this one here where my cursor, my cursor is. Just uh, look at it. There's a cursor. Click on it, the link there. And then you have another page which shows you the different Java versions. We also have previous versions here, but we are using 17. And I'm using a Linux x64 architecture. And so I'll go for this file here. That's what I will go for. Now, in terms of the download, you can just click on it and then download. Okay, and then just um, come here and then just save, save it on your system. Okay, anywhere on your system. But then I will prefer to use the command line. So I wouldn't use the browser. So what I will do is just copy the download link. I'll right click. And then I'll copy the link and then I'll now go to the terminal and then download but I repeat you can also just click on it with the browser and then download but it's fine so let's go to the terminal and then continue so there's my terminal and I believe you've also opened your terminal to follow so first of all I will cd to my home directory I just want to be sure let me do an ls to check how stuffs are here and then I'll now download the binary. So that's how we do it. I'll use widgets. You can also use scale to do the download. It's fine. Any appropriate one is fine. The most important thing is to download the binary. So I'll now execute this command and then wait for the download to finish. So download is complete. Let's do an ls. And we have it here. There's a tab. We have the tar.gz. It's a tab file. Let's clear the screen. So what we are going to do next is to extract the content of this compressed file. And we use the tar command. So we say tar sdfz. And then we specify the file name. This is what we downloaded, and then we execute it. So extraction is complete. Let me clear the screen first. Do an ls to check, and this is what was extracted for us. Let's ls to that as well. So we see ls jdk 17. So the Java executable is here, the Java is here, the Java compiler, whatever you want to call it. So let's ls into that bin directory. So we have ls jdk slash bin. And we have it here. Yes, it's the Java here. So that's what we have. So if you want to run Java with the current setup, what you have to do is to say jdk-17 slash bin slash java and then it will run for you. That's how we do it. But one disadvantage of this current setup is that you need to always specify the full path. That's why I am. And so that's why I use this path. But if you are in a different directory, then this path may change. 
Okay, so that's one disadvantage of the current arrangements we have. So what we are going to do is to set up our system such that once we just type a Java like this, it will run. But at the moment, let me clear the screen first. At the moment, with the current setup we have, if you type Java, it says command Java not found. Okay, you see this one here. These ones are coming because I'm using an Ubuntu system, so it just prompting me that I can install Java using these commands. But that's not what I want to do now. I just want to give you a generic way of installing and using Java. So that's why we are using the binary. So what we want to do is to make sure that once we type Java like this, the Java, the command works. Let me put it that way. And so what we are going to do next is to set a path. Let me get back here. We are going to set a path to this one here. Let me case like doing slash. Let me do it here. We are going to set a path so that everything here is available for the system. So what we need to do is to properly organize our files. Let me do an ls again here. So what we are going to do is to create a directory and in that directory we place this binary thing. So let's create a directory called apps. So we say make that apps. And then we are going to move this into that particular directory. So I'll say mvin dash vin jdk 17. And then I specify the targets apps. Then I've moved it there. That is how we do it. Okay, so it's there. So we are still working on setting a path. That means we need to now get a path of this one here. So we are going to cd to this apps slash jdk slash b. So we say let's do an ls again first. Let's do ls of apps. Yeah, so I'll say cd app slash jdk 17 slash bin ls here and then there's it we have a java here so this path is what we need so let's do pwd so there's a path that we need for this okay so take note of this part. Please know that yours is likely to be different from what I have here. But just take note of this one here. It's important. So we go back. We are going to set a part to the lab directory as well. Let me go back. Let me do a CD. Let's do an LS. And we do LS of apps slash jdk 17 you see this one here this slip here we're also going to set a path the, the library path and add this directory also into it so we are going to do the two and then finally we can now run java of course there are other things you can do but these two ones should be fine for you to run your java um, commands successfully so that's what we are going to do now so let's just cd into that to get that one to cd apps slash jdk 17 slash lib let's do a pwd so you have the two of them there so these two parts we are going to need all of them so what i will do is just keep a record of all those ones so i'll just copy them somewhere please also do same just copy those two one is the library parts one is the 
executor bus. So let's clear the screen. The next thing we have to do is to add the path to the Java and then to the lib directory, which contains some files that Java sometimes needs. So let's first cd back to our home directory. And then we edit the .basharc file. Now the .basharc file contains some commands and statements that will be executed anytime you run the terminal or you open the terminal. Let me put it that way. So let's look at some of the contents in the .basharc file. So you see here, the .basharc, and you have some of this here. We have some of these here. So, what we are going to do is to edit the Bashar C. But before we edit, it's important we add a backup. We make a backup of the Bashar C file. So I'll say cp Bashar C and then I'll say Bashar C dot back. It's just a copy so that. In case of editing, you can just revert back to the original file. So let's do an ls and we have our backup here. So it's now time to edit the Bashar C file and then add the path to it. So this is what we are going to do. I will use nano, but you can also use any text editor, vin, vin, whatever. It's all fine. So I'll say nano dot bashar c and then I'll scroll down to an empty space here and then I'll add a path. So we are going to add a path and also add um, a path to the lib directory. So that's how we do it. So Here's the first one. So I'll say export path equals, and then I'll give the path to the bin where the Java is, and then I'll say colon, and I'll say dollar path because there are other uh, values in the path as well. So we just add all. So that's how we do it, and then let's add the other one, which is the library path. So I'll say export library path equals and here we add a link. Remember there were two um, parts we, we recorded. So it is the lib one, also colon and then dollar library path. These two parts, we need them. This one will work with Java, but there are situations where Java might need some files or some code from the lib directory. So it's important to add that to the library path as well. So that is why we have both there. So that's how we do it. So if you are using nano, you can exit by using the control X. So that is what I am going to do now. So I'll say control X here and I'll type Y for yes to save and then I'll hit enter. So that would have saved it for you. So the changes you've done will be affected when you open a new terminal. And that is what we are going to do next. So let's open a new terminal and then continue from there. So there's the new terminal that we have. So let's type Java. And you have a display here for you. So everything is now fine. Let's clear the screen. But just to confirm that it's the Java that we downloaded and then set up, we can see which Java. This command here will show you the path to the Java. So once we do it, notice we have this coming up. So this means a home directory. And my home directory is slash home slash students too. And this is what has been represented with this character here. So it's fine. So now we have Java being run successfully for us because we use the binaries. So this 
procedure works with a lot of platforms, a lot of Linux platforms. So I am sure it's going to work on whatever platform that you have. I used Ubuntu, but I also tested this on CentOS and it worked fine. So those two at least I can confirm it works. So once we are done with this, we can do a mop-up to delete unwanted files from our system. So let's do an ls. We remove this the downloaded tab of file and we also remove the backup. Now backup, we don't need it because we have successfully edited the path in the bashar C file. So that's also fun. So let's remove this two. So I'll start with the bash rc you can also leave them if you wish it's not compulsory to delete this ones but we don't need it anyway so we can remove it so that's how we remove files please know that when using the rm the command the changes made is permanent when you delete with rm you can't recover the file back so you should be careful when using the rm commands so we remove them so we remove that one, let's do an ls and we have this here, it's gone. Let's remove this one also. So I'll say rm open jdk this and then I remove that one as well. Let's do an ls and we have everything gone. So now we are fine. Let's do java again. Let's do which java just to make sure we have the right java file. So that's how we do it. So that's how we use the binaries um, to configure and then run Java on Linux platforms. So I believe it has been helpful and you can also try and use them. Let me also get your views in the comment section. Let's discuss and then have some fun. So that will be all for this tutorial and I'll see you in the next session. Goodbye.